So back in 1995, 1996, we saw the rise of a brand new technology that had a huge, massive impact on software development. Of course, that was the web. Web technologies started hitting. You had JavaScript, Java. You had uh, servers, web servers in 96. You had ASP Classic, as it's called today. Prior to that, you had Perl CGI. Then PHP hit the scene, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. So what lesson can a modern developer today learn from the lessons of the mid to late 90s uh, in terms of software development careers, in terms of where you should concentrate your efforts? Who made all the money back then? So I was around back then. I was one of the early adopters of web tech. In fact, that's where I cut my teeth. As a developer, I was not a traditional developer. Up until that time, development was pretty much dominated by thick client programming, building apps for Windows, and to a lesser extent for Mac OS and the occasional Linux application. That was development. So the biggest language of the time was VB, uh, VB5, I think five and six. Six was the last one I know of. And if you were doing small business development, you were doing VB6. So lesson number one, those developers, the developers who uh, embraced the move into the modern technology, into the web, did very, very well. So for me, back, at, back in the day, I was not aspiring to be a developer. I just saw web development, web design as being a superpower to monetize, and in fact, it did very, very well for me. I'm super, happy. I'm super happy I did. And I only scratched the surface of what people uh, could make in terms of cash and career with web design and development. I did okay. Your Uncle Steph here is not, uh, is not, not bitching, not moaning, but some people really capitalized on it. So one of the lessons I learned was, number one, uh, jump on the rising tide. Jump on the technology that's uh, gaining the traction now. Don't start becoming a zealot. Like back in those days, you had some Delphi programmers and some VB6 programmers. They were crying and screaming how the new tech, the web, was inferior to what they were doing and how it was a travesty. And in some ways, they were correct. Back in those days, web development was extremely primitive compared to what we do today. It's not even close, not even close. They uh, have modernized web development, web design tremendously, and I'm thankful for it. I remember back in the day, a little anecdote, when the web started becoming a thing and the internet in general, famously Steve, not Steve Jobs, famously Bill Gates, said, oh, this web thing, this internet thing, it's just a fad. It's not going to go anywhere. The future is about Windows. He said that partly, well, maybe he didn't have any vision, but also he was economically, he felt uh, obligated to try to kill the internet and the web because uh, he, they saw it, Microsoft saw the web as uh, a threat to Windows. Back in those days, Microsoft was generally a Windows-centric company. Everything came off of Windows. They dominated the entire computing industry because of Windows. And they did a lot to try to prevent people from migrating to web technologies because web technologies is platform agnostic. You can surf a website and a web app, whether you're on a Windows machine, a Mac machine, or a Linux machine, doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's a little side note of history there for you. So what's going on today? Well, today, the new technology, the new web tech, it's not blockchain. As I said years ago when blockchain came out, I said it's going to be a fringe technology. I'm not saying it's no good. I'm just saying it's such a, it's got such a specialized use case that in the grand scheme of things, not too many people are going to be using blockchain technology. And I've, I've been proven to be correct about that. No, 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 no. The thing today, the technology of today, the disruptor today, of course, is AI. Number one, AI. Uh, number two, I would say um, low-code, no-code platforms continue to gain more and more momentum because they're becoming more and more powerful. Things like Airtable, 
um, things like, well, content management systems have been around for ages, content management systems like uh, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Drupal, and there are many other low-code, no-code platforms, Wix, Shopify. These are all platforms that you are developing with. So you're not writing any code or you're writing less code, but you're getting a lot more done. Again, as a developer, you should not see that as a threat. Something I've been preaching for years in software development, the top three rules of software development. Rule number one, reuse. Rule number two, reuse. Rule number three, reuse. Don't go looking for code to write as a professional developer. Professional developer, the first thing you do when you are approached with a project or you have a project to do is to see if somebody else has already built it. That's the first thing you should do. If somebody has already built it, there's a 90% chance that you should leverage that technology because they have probably, they who have built the software before you, have probably figured out a bunch of problems that you're not even aware of and they solved it in this software. So before you go out, again, before you go out looking to build new software from scratch, look to see what else has been built. With that in mind, that tells you something about the way software development continues to grow. It grows to add more and more abstraction layers over what was already built over the previous foundations so that developers become far more productive. I can tell you from personal experience that we are far more productive today. We build much more application today than we used to just in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, simply because of the languages are much more sophisticated, the frameworks are much more refined and they're more sophisticated. We're just far more productive. For example, if you are using JavaScript, that is a layer on top of uh, older languages. If you are using Node, uh, JS, if you're using Express, again, these are frameworks, these are engines that have been built, so you do not have to build them. React, you're using React. Again, it's a layer, a layer of code, when I say layer, that does a lot of stuff that we used to have to do manually. I remember back in the late 90s, we'd be building software and we would be building uh, authentication systems or pagination systems or charting uh, libraries. And I remember saying to one of my uh, co-developers or fellow developers on a project, I said, this is ridiculous. We're always building authentication, authentic, authentication systems over and over again. This should be standardized. We're all building uh, database uh, result set uh, paginated tables. This should be codified, should be uh, in place. This should not be something we have to build over and over again. Even as simple as a date picker, I remember in 1996, we were, uh, somebody had to build a date picker object. I remember we were shr shrugging, this is so stupid, this is such a, a common widget, a common UI inter uh, widget that everybody should have out of the box. One of the problems we had is because Microsoft was trying to do what it could to put a stopper on these things. Of course, that being said, Microsoft did invent Inner HTML, which is fantastic. If you don't know, Inner HTML is uh, Microsoft's contribution to um, being able to drop in HTML code and text at any spot within your doc document. Uh, we're talking HTML pages. This broke the uh, typical DOM syntax, which was quite verbose, relatively speaking. So even though Inner HTML was kind of a hack, the Worldwide Consortium, this is the organization that basically sets the standard for the web, the web standards organization, there we go. Anyway, they accepted it, even though it was uh, kind of a hack, but it was so useful. So you gotta give kudos to Microsoft for that, number one. Number two, also for creating page-based uh, web apps, which was uh, expressed through active server pages. Everybody adopted that, and that's like what we still do to this day the page-based paradigm for view, uh, view implementations on the web. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. I'm getting a little bit too nerdy here. So there you go. In 2025, developers should be looking at what's cutting edge now. Don't look to the past. Once you get your fundamentals of development under your belt, I recommend the web stack because it's universal, has the most job opportunities as well. Then I would get uh, get into, maybe I would learn one back-end framework, 
So if you're in PHP world, that'd be Laravel. If you're in JavaScript world, that would be Express as an example. Uh, maybe I'd learn the very basics, the very basics, don't go crazy, of a front-end framework, whether it's something as simple as a bootstrap or a React or something, or a Vue maybe. My preference is Vue for various reasons. But where you should be putting your efforts is A, is actually building real things, get paid to learn beyond your foundation. So you learn your foundations and then you build real things. That's what I teach and that's how I have people do in my mentoring group, by the way. And then uh, number two, you should get into AI. Do not ignore AI because you see it as a threat. It is not a threat, it's just a tool set. So jump into AI world, understand it, probably start with GPT and then, or maybe Grok for coding or whatever one you want. There's several out there. Just become aware of the AI world. Look at different AI models, whether it be GPT, Grok, Gemini, Claude, etc. Just look at them as languages. Look at them as frameworks. And just so that uh, you'll know which ones to use and given the project at hand. I'm not going to make any specific recommendations because the space, the AI space, is moving so quickly. So I may recommend X. I may say, okay, uh, today, uh, ChatGPT 4.0 is the best and 5.0 will come out. You know what I mean? So today in 2025, uh, March, late March, yeah, ChatGPT, OpenAI, pretty good. Or a Grok maybe, pretty good. But look around, you know. Also look at good code editors. That's of course, you got to know that. They got that integrated in there. The coding AI will improve your productivity. No question. You still have to know what you're doing though. The AI still make mistakes. They call it hallucinations. So uh, you have to have an eye. You have to have that good understanding of fundamentals so you can catch when uh, an AI makes a hallucination. That being said, it can speed up the whole process, not only just writing the code, but researching options, uh, having it summarize things. I use it all the time now, uh, I, especially when people send me long ass emails. I use it to summarize emails and uh, so I can, uh, you know, get so I can answer more quickly. It's very efficient that way. And I use it in many other areas as well. So, you know, don't embrace the AI. Also look at more traditional abstraction layers like content management systems. Understand a little bit about WordPress. Not you don't have to be an expert, just understand where it's used. Understand some of the low code, no code frameworks like the Wixes. Wix is one, Airtable is another. Uh, they all have their place. I was on a call a few weeks ago with somebody who has a startup and uh, I believe it was an iOS game, if I recall. Anyhow, he was telling me that they were able to build their MVP, their very first version of their product, their minimum viable product. They were able to build the MVP in about three months rather than uh, over a year because of AI. AI just sped up the process. They still had to be developers. They still had to know how, what they were doing, but they were able to get a lot more things done. This leads me to my last point. AI will make certain jobs obsolete, no question. But at the same time, it's gonna provide massive opportunity for people. So number one opportunity, there are going to be new implementations, new types of software that are gonna be developed based on AI that did not exist before. So that's going to create a whole new set of jobs, a whole new set of implementations, if you will, that did not exist before. That means a lot more jobs. So those who understand the AI space in terms of not necessarily building an AI, but understanding all the different AIs. Again, think of AIs like languages or databases. Think of them as tool sets. Think of them as APIs that you can leverage to do things that you couldn't do before. So it's going to create, it's creating a whole new set of tasks and jobs that software could not do before effectively. So a good friend of mine, I did an interview with him a few weeks ago, his business is basically that. He's creating custom chatbots and other uh, automations for businesses uh, that uh, he could not do without AI. So his whole business is based on implementing these things. And he's doing pretty good. Another advantage that AI brings to the table for people is that it allows smaller developers or smaller teams, smaller companies who don't have the big money to be able to start building the type of applications that they could not build before. So this means, for example, like the aforementioned startup, he's able to get in the game and build a software in three months, which would have took him normally a year. 
This makes them far more competitive. This is actually a risk or provides more competition rather for the big companies who wouldn't have this small company prior to AI to compete against, which is great. In the end, what this does, it makes software better, it makes software cheaper because of the quick turnaround. Again, you still need to know what you're doing. Developers still need to have be well trained, and this is going to be for a foreseeable future. I would imagine at least five to ten years. It could be wrong, but that's my guess. Remember, I'm recording this 25. I think GPT came out two, three years ago, and people were saying, "Oh, it's the end of coding." It's not the end of coding. It's just what I had predicted at the very inception of all this has come to pass. We're seeing some of the old jobs be replaced with brand new jobs. So jump on that wave. Don't be like the VB6 programmers back in the 90s. Don't be the traditional thick, thick client application developer back in the 90s. Be the web developers. Get into that game. Get into the AI, low code, no code development game. That's where the money is. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in the ways of software development, business building, SaaS based business building. Uh, also, now social media, I'm jumping more into that. I've done all these things. Everything I teach is based on my decades of experience, really. And so you can check out the links below. Uh, you can check out my mentoring program, my standalone courses. And I also have, for the first time, I'm offering private consults. You can book 15 and 20 minute consults with me. Links below for a bargain price. Bargain price. Uh, and I also have a sponsored video thing. I got this idea from some other dude. Essentially, if you want me to answer a question where I'll make a video of it, uh, yeah, you, you, just, you, can, you can basically sponsor a video. And I will make a video based on your question, and I will put it online, and you will be anonymous, but you'll get your question answered. So it's, uh, there you go. That's it. Cheers.